I'm, I'm Don Samulak, President, U.S. Operations of Editage, Cactus Communications, and I'm here in London, in the U.K., at the Macmillan Science and Education Building in the Digital Science Offices, talking with John Hammersley, co-founder and CEO of Overleaf. Yourself as an entrepreneur, as a, as a business person, but who is heavily entrenched in the publishing community and the research community, bridging between the two, uh, what is your vision of what the future of of publishing is going to evolve into? So I think it's really interesting and I think it's a really exciting time to be part of it and, and this is one of the reasons we we founded Overleaf was because we felt it was the perfect time to be part of and to help contribute to the, the growing rise of reproducibility and openness in science and just generally the, the growing rise in interdisciplinary collaborations. So. I hear it all the time and I see it through examples that, that people use Overleaf for. Is, um, you may have mathematicians working with biologists or economists or um, physicists working with chemists, writing and producing different, different papers and combining the expertise in different fields. And I think through advances in technology, science is becoming more interdisciplinary. You suddenly have biologists now working with computer scientists in a, in a in a really growing field of computational biology. And it makes perfect sense to have tools that, that complement and let you work with large data sets, let you work collaboratively on papers between people with very different backgrounds and very different writing um, habits and experiences. And so rather than the output from research just being one static paper, you can also combine that with all the, the data that went alongside that. You can, you can have it so it's more of a conversation and you can have, include comments and, and reviews. And I really like what's being done towards open peer review. I see that science and research is, is becoming more open with the mandates from governments that, that publicly funded research should be open. And I see it becoming more reproducible and, and more transparent with the inclusion of the data behind the paper and, the, um, and making it easier and making it and encouraging people to, to reproduce work and test and validate different conclusions. So what are the limitations where the communities are publishing in an open access point of view or open collaboration point of view? What are the glass ceilings that you perceive right now that we need to break through? So I think a lot of this has to be tied to, to how the academic career progression works. So I think challenges in the past have been that um, everything was tied very much to citation record and publication record, but we're now seeing movements away from that and movements towards recognizing other sorts of publications and other sorts of, of measures of success, if you like, or measures of impact of a paper. And we're also starting to recognize, and I think there's, there's a growing recognition for the fact that different people contribute different things um, to papers. So some people might produce the data that goes into the paper, someone might write up the research and, and other people might be conducting the experiments and I think we're starting to see more recognition for these different types of contributions um, but until it's really tied in with how things are funded I think that that's the big challenge that the mandates on, on public funded research being an open access is encouraging because it's helping to you know say that you know we believe that the research should be open and that we believe it should be you know then collaborative and, and absorbed able to be absorbed by the, the community and, and not hidden away um, within, within silos and within, you know, only, only accessible by people at, at institutions with, with subscription access to those. You know, I'm guilty, I, I wrote three papers during my PhD which got published. The data sets that I used, the, the computational programs that I wrote to analyze that data, that's just sat on my computer and there was no incentive for me to make it open. In 10 to 20 years, we will start to see that actually if you have provided a data set which has gone on to be analysed by lots of different people, you should hopefully be able to get funding to continue to produce data sets. What I perceive one of the major limitations in the research community is just out and out their conservativeness in not willing to change, not wanting to change, and that's being broken somewhat by the youthful generation who grew up digital and, and think digital, uh, for me, the research community glass ceiling is the willingness to reach out and, and just 
simply use Overleaf and, and use other platforms. I think we have to recognize that different people have different problems and, and people at different stages of their research career have different problems and different challenges. Um, and, you know, as someone who's a senior lecturer, probably their biggest challenge is time. You know, they don't have time to, to do a lot of things and necessarily, you know, embrace new tools. And I think it's, there's some responsibility there on us, the providers of tools and, and you know, the communities that build them, to, to make them accessible to different people and, and recognize that people use them in different ways. I mean, a good example for Overleaf was that we, but sometimes we would get some feedback that, from an author, a student author, that said it was great. I, I, I really enjoyed writing it. It was, it was really easy. But now I've sent it off to my supervisor. He's asked for a Word version because he wants to use track changes and comments in Word because that's the best way for him to do it. We took that on board, and one of the things we've, we've recently done is launched track changes, you know, an easy track changes mode and a commenting feature so that people who, who want to leave quick comments now can do so. We've, we've had a lot of feedback from users, so 200,000 users provide us with a huge spectrum of, of, of you know, inputs and suggestions for what to do next, and we, really, you know, we try to listen to that. Let me ask about you, your personal... Um, I, I know everything I do, I do by passion, I, and my motivation is passion to make a difference in the world. What motivates you to uh, keep making this change, to, to keep uh, doing what you do? I think you summed it up really well in, in wanting to make a difference. You know, I mean, that's, that's kind of been behind everything that I've done. We started Overleaf because we recognized that it was actually making a big difference to, to how people write their papers. And, you know, I've heard it said, this isn't an original quote for me, but every half an hour you save a researcher from doing admin tasks. You know, it's half an hour for them to help save the world. That's great. Again, as an ex-researcher, one of the real barriers was was getting thoughts down the paper. And if there are collaborative tools, that reduces the um, the inhibitions of getting started because you start up a collaborative tool, maybe the other person gets you started, and uh, uh, and that accelerates research. And uh, anything that can be done to accelerate research, you mentioned save researcher time, but that translates into accelerating research. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this example. So um, three um, um, researchers doing mathematical models of cancer tumors, um, they got together for a bit of a hackathon. Um, one, is, one was David, who was based out in the Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida. Another was Artem, who's based in Montreal. Um, and another one is Jacob, from, who's based in the Oxford Center for Mathematical Biology. Um, they got together and they were working up some ideas for these mathematical models and then in, in four days they'd written a paper on Overleaf and had been able to publish it to the archive where it's then available for other people. And I like to think that you know, rather than no, you know, rather than ideas you know, taking a long time to, to come out and maybe being sort of siloed, mm -hmm. um, they can be more accessible more quickly. That's yeah, really I think that's a great idea. I never thought of Overleaf or collaborative writing tools as a as a weekend exercise. You know, let's just jump on Overleaf this week and see what we can bang out as a research paper. Mm -hmm. uh, that that that's classic. I mean, that that can actually change the way uh, reviews are done or other things are done. I, I tip my hat to Overleaf to potentially opening up a whole new way of working. Uh, it's not just a tool, it's a whole new environment and a whole new outlook on how to produce research and how to, uh, how to publish, not just what to publish. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a hugely exciting time. We're, you know, we're, we're, growing, we're growing rapidly and we're, we're looking forward to the future. I mean, there's lots of exciting things to come and that we're already working on and there's probably a lot of other exciting things to come that we haven't even thought of yet. But yeah. that's, that's, That's great. what it's all about. So uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you, you today. Again, it's Don Samulak, President, U.S. Operations of Editage, Cactus Communications, uh, currently sitting today in London, U.K., at the Digital Science Offices of Macmillan Publishing, uh, talking with John Hammersley, co-founder and CEO of Overleaf. Thank you, John. Thank you, John.